Section 2. Common Formats for Documenting Sources A key to avoiding plagiarism is to make sure to document your sources by providing a bibliography and in-text citations. Documenting your sources is a consistent expectation in academic classes, the workplace, and society. Documentation is the ethical way to use source material. What do these terms mean? Documentation. Giving your source credit for the words, ideas, or other material that you borrow and use in your own work, paper, speech, or other projects. Bibliography. A list of all the sources you use. In-text citations. The source, cite, the source information provided with each separate quotation phrase, paraphrase, summary, or other source material that you use. Providing documentation in the form of a bibliography and in-text citations is the opposite of plagiarism, and both are required for complete and correct documentation. What are the common formats for documenting sources. Different academic disciplines and workplaces use different documentation styles or formats for in-text citations and bibliographies. The following are three of the most common. MLA, from the Modern Language Association, frequently used in humanities and fine arts and such as English, speech, theater, and art. APA, from the American Psychology Association, frequently used in health professions and social sciences, such as sociology and psychology. Chicago style, sometimes used in the humanities, including history. Important, always check with your instructor or the assignment sheet to find out which documentation format you should use. Some instructors may not have a preference as long as you use one of the formats correctly. However, some instructors will require a specific format. The purpose of this section of the tutorial is not to cover every aspect of MLA format, APA format, and Chicago style documentation. Instead, the purpose is to introduce you to bibliographies and in-text citations. The list of resources on the home page of this tutorial contains additional specific information and examples. IVCC's Tutoring and Writing Center and your instructor are also excellent resources. How do you create a bibliography? Regardless of what documentation format you use, each one requires a bibliography. Each documentation format requires that you list all of the sources you use. If you include even one quote, sentence, or phrase, or one idea from a source, you have to list that source on your bibliography. If you only use only one source, you still have to list it. If you use three sources, or ten sources, or twenty sources, they all have to be listed on your bibliography. Important, not listing a source that you use is a form of plagiarism. Each source you list on your bibliography is called a bibliography entry. Including a bibliography entry for a source allows your readers to know where you found your information and to find that same information in the same source if they are interested in doing so. What you call your bibliography depends on what documentation format you are using. MLA, APA, or Chicago style. Here is a list of what each format calls the bibliography. MLA, Works Cited Page. APA, References List. Chicago style bibliography. Regardless of which documentation format you are using,
Here are some key steps to creating a correct bibliography of sources. One, know what kind of source you are using. Examples of types of sources would be a journal article, books, chapters of edited books, interviews, web pages. If you aren't sure what type of source you have, ask your teacher, a librarian, or a writing tutor in the IVCC Tutoring and Writing Center. Two, find a correct example of a bibliography entry for that kind of source. Because different kinds of sources contain different types of publication information, books, articles, web pages, for examples, are all listed a bit differently. MLA, APA, and Chicago style all publish their own manuals with updated information, and these manuals are available in the Tutoring and Writing Center at the Jacobs Library. Many other reputable sources are available for correct examples, as well as such as the IVCC Style Sheet and the Purdue Online Writing Lab, OWL, O-W-L which are both listed on the home page of this tutorial. Important! Make sure that you are always referencing the most updated and accurate information for the documentation format that you are using. Especially if you look online, the information may be incorrect or outdated. If you are not sure if what you are using is correct or up to date, ask someone in the tutoring and writing center or ask your instructor. It's also important to note that the capitalization, punctuation, type size, or other elements in the correct entry that you find may be different from how they appear in the source itself. That's because your source may not be following the same documentation format that you are. Your goal is to find a correct example in MLA, APA, or Chicago-style format, and then to make sure that your own entry for your own source matches that example. 3. Use available tools to create an entry that matches the correct example. Many library databases and even some web pages contain a pre-made citation for that source, often provided in multiple formats. Look for these pre-made citations, but remember to check each one against the correct example that you found. If they don't match, you will need to make corrections or use another method to create your bibliography entry for that source. Another option is to use a citation generator. Citation generators are programs that assist you in creating bibliography entries. Some are online, like NoodleBib, available through the IVCC Library website. Others include Citation Machine and EasyBib. Microsoft Word contains its own built-in citation generator as well. It's not cheating or plagiarism, to use a citation generator. However, you need to use a citation generator wisely. Assuming that a citation generator will guarantee that a bibliography is correct is often leads to mistakes. To avoid mistakes, check that the citation generator is from a reliable source. It is using the most updated information for the documentation format that you are using. You have provided it with the correct information, including the kind of source you are using and all the correct publication information. Once you use a citation generator to create an entry, remember to check it against the correct example that you found. If they don't match, you need to make corrections or use another method to create your bibliography entry for that source. Of course, if you choose, you may just type a correct bibliography entry based on your source information 
and made to match the correct example. If you're using more than one source, then you must repeat these basic steps for every source you're using. 4. List your biography entries on your MLA Works Cited page, APA Reference List, or Chicago Style Bibliography. MLA, APA, and Chicago Style all require that you list multiple sources in alphabetical order based on the author's last name, or if there is a no author, the first important word in each entry, typically the first word of a title, but not including a, an, the, of, etc. Entries are typically double-spaced in an actual paper or other project and use hanging indent. The first line is not indented, but the rest of the lines are in each entry. Because this tutorial's purpose is to introduce you to documentation, it's not possible to provide an example for every type of source and how to list each different format. Again, you may consult the IVCC style sheet, the Purdue Online Writing Lab, OWL, an updated style manual, or other reputable sources for additional information and examples. You also may ask your teacher or a tutor for help. It takes time and attention to detail, but using available tools and resources will enable you to create a correctly formatted bibliography for any project, PowerPoint, slide, or in any other form. In these cases, ask your instructor what format in text citations could should take as well as what format to use. How do you provide correct in-text citations? Your bibliography or list of sources is not enough by itself to provide full documentation of your sources. While it tells your reader what sources you used, it does not tell your reader which specific words, ideas, or other materials in your project came from which of the sources you listed. That's where in-text citations come in. In-text citations provide just enough information with every piece of source material as you use it to tell your reader that you found the material in a source and which source on the bibliography it came from. The in-text citation allows your reader to refer to the right source on the bibliography for the full source information you've listed here. Important. Failing to include an in-text citation for source material is a form of plagiarism. It is essential that you include an in-text citation every time you use the words, ideas, or any other part of a source in a paper, speech, or other project. As the bibliography, there is a difference in how in-text citations are provided in MLA, APA, and Chicago style. Here is a list of what is typically required for each. MLA parentheses containing the author's last name or shortened title if there is no author and a page number if available where the source material may be located in the source. APA parentheses containing the author's last name or shortened title if there is no author, year of publication, and page number. Chicago style. A footnote based on the bibliography entry for each source and including the page number. Because MLA and APA both make use of parentheses for in-text citations, citing your source in these formats is also sometimes called parenthetical citation. The key with all three documentation formats is that your reader sees in your text citations matching exactly with what's listed alphabetically on the bibliography. If you provide an in-text citation, your reader must be able to find that source on your bibliography. What are the key takeaways 
from this section. To avoid plagiarism, you must correctly and completely document your sources by creating a bibliography and providing in-text citations. You may be asked to use different formats or styles of documentation. Three common ones are MLA, APA, and Chicago style. Always make sure you know which one you are supposed to use. To create bibliography entry, know what kind of source you have. Find a correct example for the format that you're using. Use the tools available and then list each of sources al alphabetically. To provide in-text citations, make sure you follow your documentation format requirements. Create a match with your bibliography and make sure to include in-text citations every time you use a source. This section of the tutorial should not be used as your only guide for documenting your sources since it does not cover every type of source and every variation that might occur. You should consult IBCC's style sheet, the Purdue Online Writing Lab, OWL, an updated style sheet manual, or other reputable source of, for additional information and examples. You also may ask your teacher or a tutor in the Writing Center for help. The next section of this tutorial, Section 3, covers how to quote, paraphrase, and summarize sources effectively in your paper or other project, regardless of which documentation format you use.